Hi, I'm Jamie with Chag Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about the psychological concept of priming. This might be familiar to you from idioms like priming the pump, where you prepare something or get ready, but it has a specific definition in psychology when how someone responds to a stimulus is influenced by a past stimulus, often unconsciously, and we'll talk more about that. Now, for example, if you are primed with the idea of a stick figure by watching cartoons or comics, and then you see an image where there are a bunch of different things going on, there's in a jungle, there are gorillas, there are cars, there are weird things going on, and there's a little picture of a human stick figure, your brain is going to register at something like this. It's going to say, whoa, 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 stop. There's a stick figure here. It's going to register something like the image on the right. It's going to pay a lot of attention, and it's going to really stand out because you've been primed at this idea, even though there's lots of other stuff going on. A brain that hadn't been primed might respond something like this. It says, okay, eventually I'm going to find the stick figure and my attention is drawn to it. It might take me a little longer, and it's not going to stand out either in my perception or in my memory nearly as much. This priming happens in all kinds of areas, and in some areas, it's really just of interest to researchers. In some areas, like in stereotyping or in education, it really applies to our everyday life. So in research, for example, if people were primed with the word yellow, not the color yellow, they didn't see any colors, but they were given in black and white the word yellow, maybe even some objects that were yellow, they were much faster to recognize what the word was when they saw the word banana. This is an example that's not too controversial and makes sense sort of on the perceptual level. Again, it's unconscious, not conscious. But this gets more harmful, or at least more of interest practically, when we consider social situations such as stereotypes. For example, a study done in 1996 showed that when people were primed with words associated with stereotypes of old people, like feeble or ancient or anything related to old people except words like slow or anything related to speed, somehow we think the theory is that activated some kind of concept of old people in their mind. And the observed result was that they walked away from the study center more slowly after the experiment. Of course, this was unconscious, but it's still a significant effect. Now, like a lot of studies of the priming, this study was very hard to replicate. So there's a lot of controversy around these studies, as there often is in social psychology, but we still have to take them seriously, especially when they have educational effects. For example, African-American students who are reminded of their racial status and how it differs from the norm, what we call the norm, or other students, tend to do worse on a standardized test or a classroom exam than if they're reminded of positive aspects of being African-American. So this is not just a theoretical concept in psychology. Priming is also a big deal that we have to be careful about the unconscious messages we are sending or priming for students when we educate them, when we test them, and when we see them out in the real world. And we have, whether we like them or not, these unconscious stereotypes of how people are. So priming is something you'll find a lot in the real world and something to watch out for. It's a perceptual interest just strictly when we're thinking about how we process things that come in through our senses, but it's also really a social phenomenon that we need to be aware of. More later, and thanks for watching.